Welcome back to 100 Days of Logic with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be continuing with the final 10 days of logic looking at predicate calculus. In this video we're going to be looking at the rule known as change of quantifier. We're going to represent it with C cubed. This is going to be a kind of four part rule that is going to help us along with our generalizations and instantiations when working with quantified statements and when working with predicate calculus statements. Let's take a look. So change of quantifier is going to be the following rules. For all x, x is f can be replaced with, it's not the case that there exists an x such that it's not the case that x is f. We also have, it's not the case that for all x, x is f can be replaced with there exists an x such that it's not the case that x is f. There exists an x such that x is f can be replaced with it's not the case that for all x, it's not the case that x is f. And finally, it's not the case that there exists an x such that x is f can be replaced with for all x, it's not the case that x is f. Those may seem long and complicated if you're just listening to what I'm saying, but if you take a look, it should be pretty clear. All we're doing with this is changing the quantifier from universal to specific or specific to universal and switching the negation both outside the quantifier and inside the quantifier. So if it was negative, we're making it affirmative. If it was affirmative, we're making it negative in two spots. We'll go through each one of these, however, just to give you a sense and an intuition of why they are all the case. So, the first one, change of quantifier, version 1. For all x, x is f. Therefore, it's not the case that there exists an x such that it's not the case that x is f. To look at an example to understand why this might be a little bit more intuitive, we'll start with this one. For all x, x is a or x is b. Basically, x is either a or b. All things for any x, x has to be either a or b. Therefore, it's not the case that there, there exists some x such that that x is not a or b. It's basically what that statement means. So basically, if all x are either a or b, then there cannot exist some x that is neither a nor b. That seems pretty intuitive, but if that didn't make sense, we'll try something even more concrete. All birds are animals. Therefore, it is not the case that some birds are not animals. That would just be the counterexample to all birds are animals. All things are beautiful. Therefore, it is not the case that there exists something that is not beautiful. These are just versions of this change of quantifier rule. Let's take a look at the next one. So, change of quantifier number two is we go from it's not the case that for all x, x is f, to there exists some x such that it's not the case that x is f. That doesn't make sense. Let's take a look at an example. So, it's not the case that for all x, x being a is equivalent to x being b. Therefore, there exists some x such that it is not the case that if and only if x is a, then x is b. This one's a little more complicated. I think the specific examples will help us even farther. So, it is not the case that all dogs are giraffes. Therefore, there exists some dog that is not a giraffe. There exists at least one. In fact, there exists a lot of dogs, or there seem to, that are not giraffes. But the denial of the universal is just going to be saying that there exists something that is not whatever the universal is talking about. It is not the case that all things are happy, therefore there exists something that is not happy. Once again, these are just counterexamples to our universal statements. Should be pretty clear why this is going to be a valid form of argument. Change of quantifier number three. There exists an x such that x is f, therefore it's not the case that for all x, it's not the case that x is f. Once again, Pretty complicated in just symbolic form. Let's try to make it more concrete. There exists an x such that x is a and x is b. 
therefore it's not the case for all x that it's not the case that x is a and x is b basically what this is saying is if there exists some x that is both a and b it can't be the case that for all x no x is going to be both a and b why because there does exist an x that is both a and b make it more concrete there exists something that is either soft or rough therefore it is not the case that everything is neither soft nor rough why because there exists something that is either soft or rough there exists something that is omnipotent therefore it is not the case that nothing is omnipotent all we're doing here is switching the quantifier and switching the negative or the affirmative finally change of quantifier number four it's not the case that there exists an x such that x is f for all x it's not the case that x is f to make it more concrete we'll go with it's not the case that there exists some x such that x is a implies that x is b therefore for all x it's not the case that if x is a then x must be b let's take a look at our really concrete examples to really get our feet under this one it's not the case that there exists something that is both square and round therefore for all x it is not the case that x is both square and round note what we're doing here we're saying if nothing exists then for all things they cannot have those properties so if nothing exists that has those properties for all things they cannot have those properties that's just all this is doing these should be really intuitive statements we'll do another one it's not the case that there exists something that is a unicorn therefore for all x it is not the case that x is a unicorn finally we're going to do a little logic problem here to test out our abilities with change of quantifier and to kind of understand how it's used in an official kind of propositional logic-esque form if you want to try this on your own pause the video now or if you want to just see what I'm going to do and try it on your own later I suppose that's okay you can keep the video going or if you've already tried it and you have your answer follow me and let's get started so we have our two premises it's not the case that there exists an x such that x is p and it's not the case that x is q and it's not the case that for all x it's not the case that x is r or x is q and we want to conclude there exists an x such that it's not the case that x is p in order to do this the first thing we're going to need to do is use our change of quantifier rule we're not allowed to get rid of those quantifiers that existential or universal quantifier out from under the negation sign we have to do change of quantifier first so let's do it first off premise one change of quantifier we end up with for all x it's not the case that x is p and it's not the case that x is q we'll do change of quantifier for premise two as well there exists an x such that it's not the case that it's not the case that x is r or x is q now that we have the negation on the inside of these quantifiers we are allowed to do some instantiation we're going to do existential instantiation first because existential instantiation we can't reference a letter or a symbol we've used earlier in the proof but universal instantiation we're allowed to if we did existential instantiation second we would have to pick a new letter we'll see what that really looks like when we do the next line of the proof so just remember always do existential instantiation first when you have a choice between existential and universal instantiation so that's going to be it's not the case that it's not the case that a is r or a is q premise for existential instantiation now we will do it's not the case that a is p and it's not the case that a is q premise three universal instantiation like i said if we had have switched those then we would have had to pick a new letter for our existential instantiation but because we did the universal instantiation second we're allowed to pick the same letter because universal instantiation allows us to be talking about anything any of the things because we're going from that universal general premise 
It's important for us to have the same letter, of course, so that we can be working with the same terms. QA and QB are going to be very different things than if we have both QA in both statements. What we're going to do next is we're going to do premise 6 de Morgan's Law to get us to it's not the case that A is P, or it's not the case that it's not the case that A is Q. We'll also do de Morgan's Law on premise 5 to get it's not the case that it's not the case that A is R, and it's not the case that A is Q. We'll do a double negation on premise 7 to get it's not the case that P is A or A is Q. We will simplify premise 8 down to it's not the case that A is Q. And finally, we will take premises 9 and 10 to get it's not the case that A is P, disjunctive syllogism, which allows us to do existential generalization to get there exists some X, such that it's not the case that X is P, which was the conclusion we were looking for all along. If you didn't follow that, watch the video again, try to understand it, or more specifically, watch the videos on existential instantiation, existential generalization, universal instantiation, and universal generalization. We're going to be doing as many of these problems as I can to kind of get you used to these rules, because they're honestly a little weird. That was change of quantifier. Next up, we'll be looking at conditional and indirect proofs, proving invalidity, relations and overlapping quantifiers, identity, modal logic, and some final logic problems and answers. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnadis.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.